Hello everyone, this is part 6 on how to make a shoot 'em up game in Scratch. In this tutorial, I'll be making some gameplay changes and add a new type of enemy plane. If you haven't seen parts 1 through 5 yet, check them out, links are in the description below. Anyways, let's get started. So first off, I want to uh, decrease the size of the player planes and enemy planes by a bit so that they can have a bit more room to uh, move around. So I'm going to go inside of the player plane sprite and set the size to something like 70% um, when the flag is clicked for the player plane and inside of the enemy plane I'm also going to decrease the size to 70% so now they should be a bit smaller let's try it out and as you can see the player plane and enemy planes are a bit smaller um, I think that looks a bit better but I also have to change the size of the bullets so I'm going to go inside to the player bullets and unfortunately the bullet sprites themselves are too small so I can't decrease their size to the block so I'm just going to have to go to costumes and then decrease the image size so I'm just going to highlight this and then make it a bit smaller like so and I think I'll make the bullets a bit longer so I'll make them like this and then I'll center it and I'll do the same thing for the enemy bullets so enemy bullets and then decrease their size and I'll make them a bit longer as well and then center so I think that looks fine um, I'm just gonna try it out okay the bullets are also smaller um, yeah I think that's fine uh, one thing I noticed, however, is that the bullets are a bit offset when they're being shot out from the player guns. So I'm just going to uh, make it shoot correctly. So I'm going to go to the player bullet sprite and decrease their offset a bit. So this is a code where the bullets shoot out from the left and right sides of the plane. So I'm going to decrease these numbers a bit. So I'll say something like minus 7 and plus 7. Let's see if that's fine. Um, okay, I think I'll make it minus 8 and plus 8. Let's try that out. And I think that's fine. Alright, as you can see, the player bullets now shoot out from the player plane correctly. And yeah. Um, all of these sprites are now a bit smaller. So now the player plane has more room to, you know, fly around and the player has more time to react to the enemy planes. Okay, cool. So next up, I am going to add a new type of enemy plane. So I'm planning on making some type of enemy plane that does not shoot, but they sort of just like go down the screen and then do a loop and then keeps going down. So I'm planning on having a line of five planes sort of come down from the sky. So to do that, um, I'm just gonna first right click the enemy plane and then duplicate it. And then I'll go to my costumes and quickly create a sprite for the new type of enemy plane. Alright, so I'm done with the new enemy plane, and now let's go to the code. So first off, inside of the new enemy plane, I'm going to take out the uh, point towards player plane because I want this plane to uh, point straight down. So, and now let's see, um, when the clone is first created, I want the plane to point downwards, so that's point in direction 180. So let's drag this under the Winning Stars at Clone. And I want to spawn five of these planes in a row. So under the place where I spawn the planes, I'm going to wait something like uh, 1.5 to uh, two seconds. Let's just try that out. And then I'm going to go to control and grab a repeat loop. And I'll say a repeat five times and create this clone. And then I'm going to also drag a wait one second and change this to something like, uh, let's say wait 0.2 seconds. So now I'm going to try it out. But first I'm going to go to the um, other enemy plane that we currently have. And I'm just going to take out the spawn script so that I can only see the new type of enemy plane. So if you try it out, 
Um, okay, so five planes are spawned in a row like that. But that's not exactly what I want. I want the enemy planes to spawn in the uh, same place. So let's go back to the code. And to make the enemy planes spawn directly behind each other, I'm going to create a new variable. And call this something like, um, let's say, clone starting x. Clone starting x, okay. And then I'm going to leave this to for all sprites, and then click OK. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to set the clone starting x to something from, let's say, uh, negative 200 to positive 200. So this is going to be the random x position that the enemy plane spawns from. And then I'm going to drag this right before it creates the enemy clones. So right here. And make sure that this variable is outside of the repeat loop because this value is going to be the random x position that the next five clones created are going to uh, go to. So anyways, when the plane is created as a clone, I am going to take out this uh, pick random negative 200 to 200, and then instead replace it with the clone starting x. And now if you try it, all of the enemy planes should spawn directly behind each other like that. Okay, cool. So now I'm going to edit the movement and take out the shooting. So I want this plane to uh, go down a bit and then do a loop and then keep going down like that. Let's first go to control and then grab a repeat. And I'll just say repeat 30 and then I'll make the enemy plane move, uh, let's say, four steps. And this is going to be right after the enemy plane is spawned. So let's see. I'm going to actually move this go to xy under this when I start as a clone. So over here. And then after the enemy plane is spawned, I'm going to make the enemy plane go down a bit. And then I'll make the enemy plane do a loop. So I'll go to control, grab a repeat. And then I'm going to go to motion and grab a turn clockwise by 15 degrees. I'll put it inside of there. And I'll make the enemy planes turn like 6 degrees. And since a circle is 360 degrees, we have to make sure that the repeat multiplied by the turn amount is equal to 360. So 60 times 6 would be 360. So I'll repeat 60 times. And of course, we also have to make sure the enemy plane moves while turning. So I'm going to also put in move four steps right here. And then after the enemy plane does a loop, I'm going to make it keep going downwards until it goes off screen. So we're going to need this repeat until y position is less than negative 180. And then move four steps. And then once the plane reaches the bottom, it's going to delete itself. And one thing is that I want to move the player bullet detection to a separate um, forever loop. Because if I put it in here, then the enemy plane doesn't check for the player bullet while it's doing like the loop and everything before it. So. I'm going to go to control and then grab a when I start as a clone and then forever and do the bullet detection. All right, so now the enemy plane constantly checks if it's touching the bullet and then it does all of this movement. So let's try it out. Um, let's see. So we have the enemy planes and then they do a loop and then keep going down like that. All right, cool. And I also forgot to remove the shooting, so I'll do that in a bit. But as you can see, this is going to be the new enemy plane movement. So yeah. Alright, so now I'll get rid of the shooting and also change a few other things. So first of all, we don't need this anymore because this enemy plane won't be shooting. And I'll just change the weight between each individual enemy plane to something like 0.3 seconds to add some more space between them. So let's check it out now. And OK, I think that looks better. So it does a loop and then goes down like that. All right. Yeah, I think that looks fine. And then if I try shooting them, um, OK. So one problem that I noticed is that the bullets go through all of the enemy planes. And that's because in the player bullet, we haven't checked if it's touching this type of enemy plane. So let's go into the player bullet. And then over here, we also want the player bullet to delete itself 
if it's touching enemy plane number two. So let's go to operators and then drag a or, and then go to sensing, drag a touching um, enemy planes two. All right, now let's add that in. Oops. Okay, and that should be fine for the player bullet. And one more thing that I noticed is that the enemy plane sort of sticks to the side of the screen and it sort of uh, collides with the edge. Um, I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to first make the enemy planes spawn near the edge of the screen. And okay, let's say they're over there. If they do the loop, as you can tell, they sort of stick to the edge over there and they don't fully go off screen. So I have to fix that. But first of all, let's check if the bullets work now. So as you can see, they don't go through all the planes, so that's fine. All right. But let's fix this problem. So what I was thinking I could do is that I could make the enemy plane fade out once it's reaching the edge of the screen and fade in once it's back to make it appear that the enemy plane left the screen. Uh, you'll see what I mean in a bit. But first, um, let's go to Control and then drag a when it starts a clone and then I'm gonna drag a forever loop and check if the enemy plane is near the edge of the screen so if let's go to motion if the X position is less than let's say negative 200 and um, 35 or and then I'll just copy this. So, or if the X position is greater than, um, let's say positive 235. All right. And let's drag this instead of the if. So this checks if the enemy plane is close to the edge of the screen. Then I'm going to go to control and drag a repeat. And then I'll make it fade out. So let's go to looks and change the ghost effect by let's say 20 and I'll repeat this five times all right and I think this should be fine um, oh yeah I actually want to put this inside of an if else statement because I want to check if the enemy plane is leaving the screen then I want it to fade out however if the enemy plane is back on the screen then I'm going to duplicate this and then make the enemy plane fade back in. So I'm going to repeat 5 and then change the ghost effect by negative 20. And that should be fine. So let's try it out. So if the enemy planes are near the edge, they sort of fade out like that, as you can see. And then fade back in, like so. Um, but it seems like they still stop a bit when they're reaching the edge over here. Um, let's see. Uh, okay, I'll just decrease the X position a bit. So if the X position is less than, let's say, negative 232 or greater than positive 232. And let's try it out. And all right, cool. I think that looks uh, much better. And it sort of looks like the enemy plane is leaving the screen and then coming back. All right, nice. And I think I want these types of enemy planes to only have one health because there's a lot of them. So I'm going to set the enemy plane lives to one instead of three. And now the player plane should be able to take them down with one hit. So let's try it out. All right, as you can see, one shot. Okay. And now I'm going to also make the enemy planes be able to spawn anywhere. So I'm going to set the clone starting X from negative 200 to positive 200. And now they're going to spawn anywhere on the top of the screen. All right, nice. So as you can see, we have our new type of enemy plane. Let's just wait for a few to spawn. Okay. And now one last thing, we have to make sure the player uh, plane can be able to lose a life if it's touching the enemy plane. 
So let's go to the player plane and check if it's touching the enemy bullet or enemy planes or enemy plane number two. So or touching enemy planes two, then it's going to lose a life. All right, now let's try it out. And once it touches the enemy plane, then it loses a life. All right, cool. Now I'm going to bring in the first type of enemy plane and see how the game looks as a whole. So I'm going to reconnect the script and try the entire game out. All right, so we have both types of enemy planes. And okay, I think the first type of enemy plane spawns too often, so I'm going to decrease the weight in this enemy plane. I'll just say weight something like uh, maybe 1.6 to 2 seconds. And I sort of want this plane to shoot a bit less often too. So I'll make it create a clone of the enemy bullet every, let's say, 1.2 seconds. Let's see how that looks now. The game should be a bit easier. Okay. I think that looks fine. Um, oh yeah, one thing I forgot to change are the size of the explosions. Um, because I decreased the size of the enemy planes, the explosion sizes should decrease also. So I'm going to quickly do that. Let's go to the enemy explosion sprite. And then instead of 80%, I'm going to set the size to something like... Um, 60% and I'll also make it increase the size less so I'll make it change the size by 6 okay so let's try it out and alright cool the explosions are a bit smaller now and I think I'll make the second type of enemy plane a bit smaller too they still look a bit too large compared to the other enemy plane so I'll just go to the enemy plane number two and go to the costumes and make it a bit smaller like this okay and then center and let's try it again um, alright cool they're a bit smaller now I think they're better sized and yeah now we have two types of enemy planes The player can also take damage from this enemy plane. So it seems like the second type of enemy plane is not completely going off screen. So um, let's go to enemy plane number two. And then we can just simply increase this number right here. So let's just make the enemy plane repeat until Y position is less than, let's say, negative 178. So I think this should work now. Let's try it out. So once the green enemy planes touch the bottom of the screen, they now disappear. Okay, cool. So that's fine. And yeah. Okay, so it seems like the first type of enemy plane is also not completely going off screen. So I can just change that value super quickly also. Um, let's see. Okay, repeat until Y position is less than negative 178. And let's try it out. And now if we let the enemy planes touch the bottom of the screen, they should completely go off. All right, cool. It seems like everything is working now. Anyways, that's it for this tutorial. If you enjoyed it, then give it a thumbs up and subscribe too if you haven't already. In the next tutorial, I'll probably start working on power-ups and gun upgrades. Also, I shared this project on my Scratch profile, so if you want to check it out, link is in the description below. Anyways, that's for this video. See ya!